No, so luckily, um, we are a career podcast. <laughs> That's a career. So we are not going to... Um, Go into the other... What I'm curious about, mm-hmm. though, is the first time I paid attention to you mm-hmm. was in a movie I really liked. <laughs> Uh, um, mm-hmm. What movie is that? Jerusalem. Mm. Yeah. I love that movie. Um, the soundtrack. They ha- they play different versions of the song Jerusalem, mm. and all of them are beautiful. How did you get that role? I almost didn't get that role. I almost didn't even go to the audition. Uh, it's night to lie. It's night to lie. Yo, yeah, ne, coming back from uh, uh, lunch is tough. <laughs> oh, the light is. Yeah, no, I just want to relax. You just want to relax. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope you're relaxed into this. Okay. We'll just be chilling there. Okay. It depends. What, what if Jakta wants, wants not yeah. to be relaxed and he takes it in that direction? Ah, no, I'm chilled. You chilled? Okay. I'm always chilled. Ayi koleyo. Ayi koleyo. Let him go. Anyways, welcome to 9 to Life, your career and life journey podcast where we interview the interesting people doing the things you'd like to and the things you didn't even know you could. My name is Boni Silem Kiti. My name is Lesejo Moela. And with us today is Mr. Japta Mamabolo. Um, actor? Mm-hmm. Or do you prefer thespian? Or is that just a pretentious no, I mean, word? I mean, I am a thespian, but, but I'm an actor. It's You're fine. an actor, what? then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actor? One. Scriptwriter? Two. Producer? Three. Director? Four. Two times Sapta winner. In the house. For the ones that don't know SAFTA, <laughs> South African uh, Film and Television Awards. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hmm. So I asked some of you to guess because I was like, we're having our first celebrity person. Who is it? <laughs> I don't know if I made it easy, but I promised you guys a shout out. And unfortunately, and unfortunately there's, a, there's a lot of you. So shout out on Facebook. It's Nkangoti, mm-hmm. Uyanda Kafu, Karabo Mokshale. Uh, Atembele Art, ah, but Atembele, he's, Atembele he's, he's an count. inside person, yeah. yeah. Inside. Lebo Griffiths, uh, Mama Wolo, maybe a relative. Um, Le Chabodi <laughs> Divakwane, Uyanda Matai, Neo Musi, Changelani Novela, Bra Baby on Twitter, Azania Refilo on Twitter, and oh. Manukoma, or Manuka, Matia on Twitter. Bra Shout Baby. Out. I'm never doing this again. Bra- <laughs> Okay, he, 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 t- he takes it from you, no? It's a lady, actually. Is it a lady? Yeah, it's a lady. Mm. I grew up on an uncle. What's, what's, yeah, no, what's, your, like what's your alter ego again? Abuti baby. Abuti baby. Oh, oh, uh, uh, I'm just Abuti always, baddie. Abuti baddie. I'm just always like, brah, who's, who's calling you Abuti baddie? Who's gonna call Let you a booty bag? I'm not even a two K. You know, Cedric the Entertainer has this. Um, he had this one interview on Oprah Winfrey, like mm. in like the early 2000s, mm. where he was just like, and then you meet a brother and his name is Delicious. I ain't calling no gro- grown man delicious call him so delicious mm. <laughs> it's, it's it's in the same ilk as that like abuti berry every time he posts that i'm just always like yo my friend Ish. so like, who anyway. calls you abuti berry he bro? calls himself abuti berry Self, self-titled yes it's self-titled chapter i are you here to tell you are you here to tell you yourself <laughs> I'm just saying, I was just wondering where Abuti Baddy came from. Yeah. And what is it a, is it like your Sasha Fierce? Yo. You guys are big roasted. I'm not I'm asking. I'm asking. I I promise you I'm not <laughs> Okay, let me So start. if we look at baddies, <laughs> man. Uh-huh. Baddies are these hip people, desirable people. Baddies are bad so bitches. So baddies no no, no, no. Go to no. Urban Dictionary and no, tell you a baddies no. are bad bitch. Baddies like a bad person. So you can be a male bad bad. Ish. Ah, ah, but I can't support you in this one. What's a baddie? What have you always known a baddie is, to is be? A, is a hot woman. Yeah, it's a bad bitch. Chapter 10 of the watch, I told you. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're here. <laughs> Okay. I was Are born in a now? very bad place. Tell us about your childhood and stuff. <laughs> we start with childhood all the time with our guests who respect us. They don't call us. Then you should, if you want someone who respects you, you shouldn't have called me. Let's go. You are respect very much. Scar. Thank you, my brother. Scar. I respect oh. you too. So this one is the problem child. This is the problem. <laughs> a man named Baddy. My father, the podcast. My father. But it's fine. Anyway, uh, oh. yes. So we usually start uh, our interviews with the origin story of our guest. Oh, mm. okay. To sort of understand how they got to where they are today. So what is your origin story? Oh, my origin story. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the, the normal origin story or the villain origin story? Both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, um, uh, I was born in, in a village in Ramasumola. That's in Limpopo. I was born in a place called. Uh, that's the one. That's, that's the one I was about. talking about. That's what? what you were thinking of last With, week. Um, yeah, minutes. we had a guest, Tabiso, mm -hmm. and I was saying, or or Rama Semola, Yes. Yeah. You see? Oh, you know this. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. No, 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 no. That's some of them are in my family. <laughs> 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 no, no. It's it's what it's very. My area is very notorious Yo. for producing like some of the most prolific criminals. Basically, Mami Lord mm. is run by, by gents from, from my hood. No, it's a very dangerous. Okay. <laughs> so when you is. act as a criminal, like you're just... You're just tapping into... You're just tapping no, into. That, I, that I probably picked up from, from the gents and Alex and Soweto. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the Ramasimura I'm people... I'm glad you because... Hey. No, 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 no. No, yeah. Yeah. Time, right? no shame, shame, shame. <laughs> You catch a break this time. <laughs> um, it was mostly from Soweto because I stayed in Ramasumola probably for like the first six, seven years of my life. Mm -hmm. and then I, then apartheid fell. Mm. Uh, I'm that old, yes. <laughs> um, and then moved to Pretoria. I stayed in Pretoria for two years. Mm -hmm. um, then moved to Alex. Mm -hmm. Stayed in Alex for two years. And then okay. I moved to Soweto and I. Yeah, I guess I'm a Sowetan. I consider myself a Sowetan because oh, okay. of that. Yeah. So it should be. Mm. Okay. Because, yeah, that's where most of my formative years were spent. Mm -hmm. um, the most important things happened in Soweto. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Soweto kid. Oh, but not Soweto, you know. Okay, no, big ups, big ups, big ups. And when did you, I think, be, uh, before being everything else, you started as being an actor? Like, where did that influence come from? Um, so it's one of those things where for lack of something more creative, I, I can only chalk, chalk it up to, to destiny mm -hmm. because I recall the first time that my mother brought me to Pretoria, mm -hmm. we were visiting uh, my cousin's house and they had electricity. So they had TVs and stuff. Okay. And I remember seeing a TV um, and I remember seeing kids on TV and thinking okay that's interesting and then didn't pay much attention to it and then when the SABC rebranded in 96 mm -hmm. um, when uh, SABC one moved from being CCV to SABC one then they had their flagship children's program before it was called Yo TV it was called the Rainbow Starship and I remember Jeez. watching the Rainbow Starship and I was just like they had this like silly theme song we used to go the Rainbow Starship go rainbow Go rainbow. It's so bad, <laughs> but but it, it like it, it had an indelible mark on me because I remember mm. seeing those kids, and I was like, Nah, man, I can do that. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I can this easily do easy. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and ever since then, I was just always like, That's what I'm gonna do, mm. and I've had tunnel vision ever since then. Like wow. I've, I haven't wanted to do anything else since. So wow. yeah, it's one of those things. That's fantastic. Mm. And you, you knew this from, from your school days as, as well. So you yeah. were moving like that. Too. Yeah, absolutely. When, when it was other, time to choose subjects. You yeah. Know, speech and drama. Yeah, when other kids were saying they want to be doctors, lawyers, mm. I was like, I was always the weird kid who was like, I want to be an actor. Mm. Um, and I was very serious about it because mm. um, I suppose I found my first agent myself behind my mother's back oh, wow. when I was 11. Um, and I think because she realized, okay, this kid is really serious mm -hmm. and I don't want him to do something stupid mm -hmm. like 
maybe get on a taxi and go meet up with strangers somewhere <laughs> who are promising mm. him fame mm-hmm. and whatnot. Because I was already planning that. Real I'd, thing. Yeah, mm, that's I'd, real thing. I'd found the numbers for Urban Brew Studios and I was like, they're going to put me on TV. Yo. And I was like 10 at this point. So eventually she was like, okay, no, I'll get behind it. Uh, we found an agent. Mm. Um, I signed with my agent and then took a while mm. uh, to probably get my first gig. I think it took like over a year. Um, okay. Which felt like forever to a 10 yeah. year old who yeah. that determined. It felt like forever. Yeah. And especially because I knew why I wasn't getting picked. Um, okay. I, Cause I wasn't getting picked cause I, cause of the way I looked, cause I was much bigger when I was a kid. Oh. Um, and one casting director actually told me like, you're not cute. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was the wild west back then. What the hell is wrong? It was the wild west. Um, and I ended up, no. funny enough, I ended up working for her for a few years later. And I told her, I was like, you know, when I was, when I was 11, you okay. told me that I wasn't a cute kid. <laughs> and it started like, <laughs> you see the <laughs> so, so. Like 10 year old child. Yeah, no, it's not a problem. Okay. But, but after that, so I was like, okay, I started exercising quite intensely. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at this time I was like at the National School of the Arts so yeah I oh, was cool. literally yeah I went to yeah so you knew even even in your schooling decision yeah yeah, yeah 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 high school I was like okay there's a school that teaches drama specifically yeah, and David NSA, told me Mona. wait which one is it no no I think that's oh. the East Strand School of oh, the Performing Arts oh that's the East Strand yeah. School of the Arts mine is the one where like Charlize Theron went <laughs> hey you know, okay um, bye bye okay. oh, but there's a lot of people that are like prominent now that went there, right? Yeah, and it says, like, even when I was there, I think the reason why I've never gotten starstruck or found fame to be a big deal was because you go to NSA yeah. and you're there and you're like, oh, okay, Sugar Snacks was here, mm-hmm. okay. Cypher was here, mm-hmm. half the OTV kids are there, the yeah. KTV kids are there, um, and then kids of famous people are there. Oh. Um, like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to expose whose kids well, were there. Yeah. But, like, you know, kids from, like, very affluent and very influential families were mm. there. So you're just like, oh, okay, yeah. it's Mang Mang, or um, that's uh, Mang Mang's niece, or whatever. You're just like, oh, okay, wow. yeah. Mm, so that's actually true, because even when he came to the podcast, like, he was like, he wasn't, was like this, he wasn't like this podcast with 1,000 subscribers, ooh, I'm scared. He just came in here, like, normally, you, you know, so, so big ups, NSA. I was starstruck. I even, I literally fell to my knees. Like, I was like, I can't believe I'm here, finally. <laughs> so. And how is that uh, being famous? Uh, well, well, what was your first, like, how old w- were you when you got, like, your first taste of fame? Um, well, okay, yeah, because I'd say, so... I started working regularly when I was 11. Huh. Um, but my, the first time when I was like, okay, no, 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 I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing something right and I'm probably a bit of a, of, of, of a big deal at the point was when I got on Soul Buddies. And that's when, that was in 2001. So I got on Soul Buddies. Tapelon. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and literally within a month of getting Soul Buddies, I got crazy as well. Hmm. So, oh. um, so yeah, um, I was just like, oh, okay, this is nice. Um, and then people started, um, I suppose, recognizing me um, and all that other stuff. And I was just like, okay, no, it's cool. Um, it's never been, it was never the aim. I was just always like, I want to perform. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> although it also wasn't necessarily a problem. I'm not, like, look, I don't covered fame but i'm also not one of those artists that complains about it mm-hmm. because i'll complain the day that it isn't there because yeah. for now mm, for now it's just like i'm like okay it's not what i'm looking for mm-hmm. however this is the byproduct of my work and it's usually sign of a job well done mm-hmm. the fact that i still get people like stopping me for work that i did like in 2013 something that i did for a month and somebody's like yo i love that character and all that other stuff and i'm like are you sure <laughs> um, but at the same time you're just like okay it um it left an impact it left somewhat of a mark and at least it's proof that i'm kind of doing the right thing and yeah. i kind of picked the right career because um, this one needs a lot of assurances mm. particularly because it has a lot of ups and downs mm. the the peaks are peaking, but the valleys are 
very mm. very deep very wide very lonely mm. so you know you kind of you kind of do need that affirmation from time to time mm. just to remind you yo um you're doing this for the right reasons you are good at it mm. um keep at it you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so a question that i've always had especially watching my tv and them mm -hmm. when you are how do you balance being at urban booth and doing school um for me for me it just seemed normal Okay. It seemed, yeah, since, since he left. Yeah, because okay. yeah, it seemed normal. It seemed, and also because at the time you're just like, I know why I'm doing this. And you feel like it's a big, you feel like at the time you feel like it's an honor mm -hmm. okay. um, to be able to do what you do whilst, you know, while mm. still being in school. And it actually was. Mm. So, and it, and it had a lot of bragging rights as well because okay. you got to leave school early. Okay. Um, the other kids would always see you getting picked up and you get picked up in these nice rides and oh. you know sometimes you're getting picked up and solo fellow which among is in the in the combi waiting for you and all the boys in school like love. they they love her yeah. so it's just like and she's like oh, hey babe whatever so you're walking out there like <laughs> yeah you're that's the man me. That yeah you're... so it was it was never i never found it difficult to balance because i mm. you just always understood that in order for for you to do the work that you want to do, mm. you sometimes you somehow have to find a way to balance it with the schoolwork. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because I went to NSA, um, the school was comprised mainly of creative children, mm. so they understood that mm. you know there's certain things that these kids are going to be doing that aren't quote unquote the norm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they knew how to mold us and to shape us and to guide us in in all the right directions and they understood thankfully mm. um that you know this is all part and parcel of the game so mm. so after you shoot you go home homework yeah um mm. so sometimes like for example soul buddies mm. um on soul buddies we had tutors so when you're not oh, shooting okay. so you'd shoot mm. um you you have to learn your lines and all that other mm. stuff and then maybe let's say when you get a 30 minute break or an hour's break then mm. they tell you okay go to the tutor go do your maths go do your assignments oh, okay. and all that other stuff um even when you get back to uh because where did we shoot we shot in we shot in hamanskra um so oh. there's a place called called maobani mm. so we're staying at the carousel um and then every time we get back to the carousel mm. the tutor's waiting for you thinking i got let me change me it's nice because they're giving you per diem and like mm. in the early 2000s like 250 was a lot of money so they're giving you 250 they're just like go do whatever you want with it mm -hmm. we're thinking okay. we're, yeah we're gonna go play around mix the tutors in nah lmms ems <laughs> technology <laughs> whatever those subjects are called had yeah. to do all of that mm -hmm. and you had to pass wow well mm. on top of that because you know the school needs to be incentivized as well mm -hmm. in order to allow you to do all the things that you want to do so mm -hmm. And do you think there has been a change in, especially in South Africa, with having kids on TV? Because I don't think, do the kids now have a crazy, do they have a soul buddies, do they, I don't see any space where mm. there can be another chapter right now, when there are mm. kids on TV they are the kids of Mang Mang in a drama series and they're gonna go away after they, you know, do what they have to do. Is that deliberate? Has there been a change? There has been a change. I think the change has been deliberate. Mm -hmm. um, and I might even go on a limb and say it's, it's been for the better. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I, for, exa for example, um, I wouldn't put my kids into, I wouldn't thrust them into the, into the limelight at this point because mm. I'm just like there's certain things that I experienced at a very young age and certain spaces that I was put into that I was probably way 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 too young to be in mm. um, and yeah places that I probably shouldn't have have been in at all um, so there's that and then two um, the other thing is just that I feel like on a production level and just logistically speaking, it just makes more sense to 
go with a Bonnie Seeler than your little brother because mm. you know with the younger kids you have to worry about school and mm. making sure they like all the things that they had to make sure they are taken care of with us yeah. the tutors um, making sure we're watched 24 <laughs> 7 um, all those things um, you don't have to do that when you know your host is 19 years old mm. um, it's much easier the older the the kid is the more they understand consequence and professionalism oh, okay. um, and the more they're doing it for the right reasons because mm. also with younger kids a lot of them aren't doing it because they want to it's because you know the parents hey. said oh did yeah. I spot something in my yeah. child you don't want to go with papa you know mm. so sometimes it's like that um, so for me I personally I feel like it's for the better because mm. I think I think if if a if a child is going to be like thrust into the limelight like mm. that mm. and then they're going to be having to deal with all the attention that comes, that comes um, mm. sometimes I feel like you know just have a say in it at least because mm. with me for example I picked I picked uh, my sister my sister could have possibly been the real star in the family because mm -hmm. as soon as she got in she got in via me mm. but as soon as she got in she was just like gigging left right and center mm. okay. and after a year, she was just like, not for me. Really? Yeah. She was just like, it's not for her. She didn't wow. want to do it. Um, and I'm glad she had the choice because it would have been a different story had she been forced to do it. How old was she when she, when she started now? Uh, okay. If I were... Was she a bit older, like the ages that you were referring to, like 19, 18? Um, I think she started... She was probably like in this... So 2001... I was, she was 11 as well. Okay. Okay. Jeez. So it runs in the family thing of a... Well, I think, I think my mother realized, oh, okay, mm -hmm. so it can work. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, okay, let me put the other one in them. Okay. Since I've already put one in, yeah. let me put the other one. The other one was just like, in, initially she was very excited. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she realized, actually, this is work, 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 work. <laughs> yeah. um, it's not as fun as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not as fun as it looks. And mm -hmm. it's fun your first day. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you'll find the second day, but once you realize, okay, this is like, yeah, straight 12 hours on set, mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over again. You have to learn lines. Um, there's just like a lot of responsibility on your plate. And mm -hmm. I think she was just like, yeah. Do this. <laughs> Talk about how... So, so you started very early, right? And then mm -hmm. you kept progressing in your career and started getting more serious gigs and stuff like that. Yeah. How did you... What are the things that you did to sort of improve or make yourself more is that like marketable or more employable? Because, mm. you know, for, for like traditional careers, mm. if I'm an accountant and I want to be more better as an accountant, I need to go study. Mm. And do maybe I have a, maybe I have a degree. Mm. Now I need to do honors. Now I need to do masters. Now I need to do... Yeah. For you as an actor, I don't know. I don't know if that exists. But what do you do then? Well, for me, mm, for me, I got. I suppose one, there has to be a natural spark for it, mm -hmm. um, and there has to be. That is there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that has to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to, like I said, I enrolled at the National School of the Arts, mm -hmm. um, and okay, actually, let me rewind a bit. So I signed with an agent, mm -hmm. and. When you signed with that agency, because she was dealing primarily with children, um, okay. she had a six-week training, on-camera training course for us, which basically taught you camera etiquette, mm. audition room etiquette, mm. set etiquette, all that mm. other stuff. So um, I suppose that sat in my head, and then I went to NSA. So that was in the sixth grade, and then I went to NSA for high school, mm. and NSA, it's well, it's an art school, so mm -hmm. for them, it's, you know, they take it really seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so at NSA, the discipline is drilled in you. Mm -hmm. um, and also, they teach you all the, they hone your skills um, wherever they need to be honed. Okay. Um, but I think, for me, what's probably helped me stay working for, for so long mm -hmm. Is probably because I respect the set. Um, I I respect the set environment. I've seen way too many times, you know, other people who, let's say, 
you know you start getting on you start popping and then all of a sudden you start arriving to set late mm. or you start mm. arriving to set drunk mm. or you know you start treating the people on set a way that no human being should be treated mm. Mm. so that's a lot and people don't realize that the film industry is very small mm -hmm. and everyone knows everyone's business and we're mm. all always talking, talking so yeah. your reputation is literally the only thing you have going for you yeah. mm. um, and thankfully I learned from a very young age mm. that this my reputation is going to be my currency and it's literally all I'm going to have to carry me through my entire career so I've always been very cognizant of being on time mm. um, like that's why I was waiting for you at 11 because <laughs> um, you yeah. know no, cause, we, mm. Mm. so it, I'm very yeah I'm very like mm. <laughs> big on like time management mm, yeah. and all that other stuff you you arrive on time there's a very famous uh, saying in the film industry uh, hurry up and wait it basically <laughs> means like yeah it's like you know you get to yeah. a place <laughs> You wait patiently yeah. whilst things are being set up, mm. um, whilst people are in makeup, whilst people are in wardrobe and mm. all that other stuff, or whilst other, other um, setups are being shot. Mm. You wait, and you wait your turn. Um, so I suppose I'm going the long way of answering your question. For me, it was the training I got, I suppose, from NSA, the training I got from sets, mm. from my directors, mm. because I started out very young. Mm. So they started pouring into me from a very young age. And ultimately, it was the attitude. I think the attitude is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's regardless whether you want to be an actor, whether you want to write, um, whether you want to produce or anything. If you're not fun to work with, mm. particularly because film is such a high stress environment, mm -hmm. if you're not fun to work with, you're not, yeah, dog, me, then mm. it's sayonara. Because mm. <laughs> this is already difficult enough. I don't need you making it more difficult for me. So, yeah, attitudes are important. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. Mm. Um, the soft skills are always important. Yeah. yeah. Uniquely, I think it's a common theme that we have with all our guests from, you know, um, the regional franchising manager to mm -hmm. accountants to engineers. Mm -hmm. We had a ton of, they all talk about the soft skills. Yeah. And, and, and it's, I like that it's, it's also applicable in other non-traditional no, no, it definitely is. And I feel like, especially in this industry, because, mm -hmm. because you, are, you are literally the embodiment of, of, of a, a people's person. You belong to the people. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, yeah, do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's a thing. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. It's a thing. Um, and it's how, it's how you decide to navigate that mm. yeah. that usually decides your career trajectory mm. um it plays a big part i'm not necessarily saying that you know we're owned by people and people can do whatever they want mm. or whatever but i'm just saying we're owned by people and yeah, it's mm. yeah. Mm. and whew, looking at your career mm -hmm. looks like you've been at it for what 20 plus years 20 24 24 years yeah so You've been famous your whole life, essentially. essentially. You've been in this industry your whole life. Um, have you noticed the change in, in requirements for what you need to make it as an actor? And I'm going to go to maybe this is a myth or maybe you will confirm it for us. Mm -hmm. The social media thing, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it a replacement for talent? Or is it an plus? Is it a plus? I think, I think it's a plus thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying plus in the sense of, you know, it's... I'm saying plus in the sense that it's adding on. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily saying whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily commenting on that. But it's become a part of the industry and it's probably a part that's not going anywhere yeah. because mm -hmm. social media has become such a big part mm -hmm. of of the industry mm -hmm. um, it's become a big part of the marketing it's become a big part of you know the feedback and all that other stuff so mm -hmm. it's obviously going to play a role um, obviously my issue would be when you know you 
cost directly from social media and you cost purely based on the fact that you know somebody may have numbers or mm. something like that because i feel like sometimes it's just undermining your audience mm. uh because one you're not giving your audience the product that they're signing up for mm. um you're trying to manipulate them into getting you're trying to manipulate bums into seats mm. by saying okay no um here's uh underscore big dot booty you know and everyone is everyone loves her so she's gonna come but mm -hmm. you know she she can't read her way out of a milk carton that's mm -hmm. that's a problem um but you know if underscore smang mm. happens to have a genuine interest in the work mm -hmm. and wants to learn and wants to you know wants to wants to improve the product that you're trying to put out to the public then hey so be it if that's her way of getting in in or his or her way then so be it there's more than one way to skin a cat some people get in via um you know the traditional route of having your agent send you to auditions mm -hmm. other people are discovered um other people have the casting couch there's there's a million ways to <laughs> where you know how 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 to skin a cat why why do you want to skin a cat by the way i've never understood that <laughs> sorry if you're not I, a cat person no no i'm i'm just, but i'm just like why why wouldn't they say i don't know something edible you know something that we yeah. eat yeah something that we eat what? <laughs> i've just always been so confused but anyway yeah yeah so sure okay. mm. take us through the um how do you get jobs? Is it still just auditions? I know you sort of touched on it now. Auditions, mm. sometimes you get discovered. It's and the audition process, how, how do you even find out who there is an audition? Agents. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah, most people have agents. Mm. Um, agents have a lot of, so I'll use an example. Let's say uh, Bonisile has Bonisile's Stars Agency or whatever it's called. Oh, of course. Um, the Honey Buns. <laughs> so, <laughs> There we go. The Honey Buns has 500 actors on their on their books, mm -hmm. and then we'll have Lesejos Angels. Mm -hmm. You've also got you know 300 actors. Me as a producer, mm -hmm. I will go. I'm casting for um I don't know uh, Iso Iso 16 or whatever. Yeah. Um, I need somebody who can play a principal mm -hmm. also. This is his journey, whatever. So I send it to you and I send it to you mm. and then you guys will send me your options and say, okay, we've got smang mang, smang mang, smang mang, smang mang. Mm. And then I'll go, okay, I want to see this person, that person, that person, that person. Mm. They come through. Um, we send them everything they need to prepare. Mm. By the time you come to us, you need to be fully prepared. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and then we take it from there. Huh. And I'm glad you said me as a producer mm -hmm. because you... Yes. actually are one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 you actually are one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So I've never understood what a producer does mm -hmm. in film. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I used to think that you guys hire everyone. Like, yeah. what, what do you do, number one? Where does the funding come from? Do you self-fund the project and then license it? Or are you commissioned it depends. by a channel? There's like more than one way to skin a cat. Skin a cat. So skin a cow. <laughs> is that cow? Um, Peter's going to hate us. A producer's role is to basically make sure that whatever is getting made gets made. Mm -hmm. um, so you're basically the overseer or principal. Project manager. Yeah, you're the project manager. Yeah. Um, you are, yes, you're responsible for sourcing the funds. Mm -hmm. hmm. You're responsible for making sure the funds go where they need to go. Mm. You're responsible for making sure that your product gets made, that it gets delivered um, to the right parties. Um, you're responsible for making sure your director gets what they need to get done, done. Um, you're responsible for securing the actors. Because um, the director will be like, okay, I want I want Lesejo, I want uh, Bonisil. Um, it's going to be the producer's role to make sure that I secure Bonisile and Lesejo. Make sure you guys get paid. Um, so sometimes directors don't audition people. They know who they're... they're sometimes, mm. sometimes, sometimes. And then 
Um, people don't audition. You just jump in. Yeah, I have, I have, I've, I've had certain roles where I didn't have to okay. audition, and, and that's a, that's another reason why I'm like, it's important that you put your best foot band, forward yeah. every time, yes. because, you know, certain directors will remember. Mm. Oh, he was an absolute dream on set, yeah. um, and he can do this, you know, in his sleep. Mm -hmm. So bring him on, and well, sometimes they hear from other people who go. Mm. Because I've been, I've been cast through word of mouth, mm. and sometimes I've been cast through previous experiences. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, other times it's through the traditional way. Um, not the casting couch, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just, no, because I need to, I need to, I need to like, I need to preempt what he's going to say. Oh, so you, I you know he's been asking about the coaching. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. <laughs> no, so luckily, um, we are a career podcast. <laughs> That's a career. So we are not gonna um, go into the other. What I'm curious about mm -hmm. though is the first time I paid attention to you mm -hmm. was in a movie I really liked. <laughs> Uh, um, mm -hmm. What movie is that? Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I, I love that movie. Um, That's a fun TV. The soundtrack. Mm. The soundtrack. They, ha they play different versions of the song Jerusalem. Jerusalem yes. And all of them are beautiful. How did you get that role? I almost didn't get that role. I almost didn't even go to the audition. You. Um, so I was at the time, I was at TUT. Uh, the Kharangkua campus, Kostluet. I was studying fashion because um, I was headhunted by David Klale, um, straight out of, well, whilst I was still in grade 11, so I started working for David Klale in matric. Um, okay. I was his, basically, you know, do, I used to do designs for him and all that other stuff. Okay. Um, so, Can you get into that? so, mm. yeah, so, so he was like, I was working for him, um, but he was like, He's, Dave is very big on education, like mm. very big on education. He was even a fashion lecturer before he started his own um, design house. Oh, so okay. he said to me, he was like, no, cool, you always have work with me, mm. but I need you to get your, your papers. Mm. So I was just like, mm, I don't really wanna, but <laughs> I love this job, I love what I'm doing. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I went enrolled at TUT, I was studying fashion there. Um, and also, I wasn't getting cast a lot anymore because casting directors didn't know what to do with me because I was no longer like that cute little child. I looked very young, mm. but as soon as I opened my mouth, it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so they were just like, we don't know what to do with you because mm. on camera you read 12, yeah. but as soon as you open your mouth, it's, 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 it's a grown, grown, it's a grown man. Mm. So... <laughs> So so for a while I wasn't working and I was convinced that that was the end of my acting career. Okay. So mm. I suppose I was fully investing in my fashion career at that mm. point because I thought maybe okay the acting thing is done. Mm. And a lot of people were just like look um and there was like not even coming from a bad place you are a much better designer than you are even an actor and that's wow. not saying that you're a bad actor yeah. so okay. I, was, I was just so always like okay no sure. cool let me go try this mm. um so i went and i was like okay it's cool i wasn't having that much fun because i was like i already know what they're teaching um i don't feel challenged yeah, yeah i wasn't feeling very, very challenged but mm. then i recall i got a call um because at the time i'd lost my phone um my cousin and I were robbed like two weeks prior. Um, mm -hmm. Ah, Pito, Rio, Pito, Pito. yeah. Mm. You are Jerusalem, so Ah, uh, good, good and proper, good <laughs> and proper. But I remember my phone was stolen, so my roommate at the time, my mother had his number, and my mother called him and was like, "No, there's an audition. They want him. Mm. Um, he must go." And I remember. I was just like, okay, this is weird because my mother wasn't really trying to encourage the acting all that much. Mm. Um, and she loved the fact that I was in school and taking it seriously. Mm. So I was just like, it's weird that she's telling me I have to go to an audition. Mm. And I don't even think she's doing it on purpose. She's just like saying, yeah. you have to go to this audition. So I was like, okay, no, fine. Um, next night, I'll go from 
um, this other girl. Uh, hey, that smile. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that, hey, that smile. Like, there's a story there. Hey. No, there's no story there. Uh, you guys, yeah, Hello. she gave me like, what is her name? Lolo. Okay, yeah. Uh, Lolo she gave me money. Yeah, she gave me money. I remember I left Stroyalo, tell me the first taxis at like 5 a.m. I didn't even know what I was going to audition for because yeah. I didn't have a script. Um, I just had an address, that's mm. all. Mm. Um, and I just knew it was a movie. Mm. So I went there even dressed as a fashion student. Um, this is back before, st- this is like in 2006. Skinny jeans weren't even in fashion back then. But, but you were rocking. I was fashion forward. So <laughs> I was rocking skinny jeans. I was rocking pink. I remember I had this pink shirt and collars were in at that time. It had these oh, ridiculous collars. Co- Yes, oh, I, I look. I look. Yeah, yeah, right? Now nah, <laughs> I look ridiculous, and I got to the audition and I read. I start reading the brief and it's like ah, hey, 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 Bansola, hey, hey gangster, hey. whatever. I was just like ah, sh- I'm wasting my time. What am I doing here? But I was like, I'm already here, mm. so I might as well audition. Mm. So I got in. I did the first audition. Um, the director Ralph. The producer Tendega, and there was another guy, Bram Tum He was the cultural advisor. Mm-hmm. They gathered in a small circle, whispered mm-hmm. amongst themselves. Cool. Then they gave me another script. They're like, "Are you in a rush? Do you need to be anywhere?" I'm like, "Nah, not really." Uh-huh. So they're like, "Okay, can you learn that quickly? Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll give you ten minutes. Come back and do it. Ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm still not thinking anything of it. I come back. I do it." Um, and during that time, I even realized they'd already cast someone for my role because they had a cast sheet and they'd planted um, this other kid's picture next mm. to Rabulana's picture. Oh, um, okay. So that was, that was who they, they were considering for the role. Mm. Huh. So, ah, uh, now I read. Then they gave me another script. Then eventually, I've been there for a couple of hours. They're like, wait, you don't have to be anywhere, right? I'm like, no. Yeah. Um, then they call in Motrati, who played uh, the young Zakes. Mm. Then I start reading with him. Um, they're just like, now we're trying to gauge your chemistry, whatever. Mm. Still, there's people taking my measurements. I'm just like, how? Oh, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> um, and I recall because they were like, they're like, so okay, no. So then I'm like, okay, no, cool. I think I think the audition went well because I'm like, this is either the longest audition I've ever been to, yeah. or I. I got this yeah, role. Yeah, wiki. Mm. So I eventually leave at like three uh, in the afternoon. I'm going home. By the time I get home, my mother's like, no, some people called. They said you got some movie. Um, and I was like, oh, shucks. Because they told me the same day because I was the last person they auditioned oh. for mm. the role. Um, they started shooting the Monday. So they'd been auditioning people um, for months. They'd seen every actor in my age group. Sure. Um, and they weren't happy with who they had. I was literally the last person they saw. Um, and they started, yeah, this was on the Friday morning. Mm. Um, I left them on the Friday afternoon. Saturday, the next day, I had to go do rehearsals, do fittings. Hmm. Monday, we had to start shooting. Like, it was literally just, just like, like that. that. Yeah. Sure, what happens with school then, in such a circumstance? Ah, I left, dog. <laughs> I left. No. I was like, I remember thinking, I was like, okay. School movie star, Yo. school movie star, and also the pay. Line, eh? Yeah, and the, and the payday was nice. Okay. okay. The payday was nice at the time. Like I, I'd, I'd never seen that much money at the time. It wasn't in hindsight, it wasn't a lot of money, mm-hmm. but, but because I was eighteen, you, yeah. yeah, I was eighteen, um, and give only thousand, thousand, thousand. I was just like, yo, get <laughs> more, <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Mm. Jeez, interesting. And and how does how does then um, how do you then move from actor to producer, director, screenwriter, um, all the other things? Well, so I was on I was on a a little known show. I don't know if you know. It. I was on a show called Generations. Oh, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so so I was on Generations at its at its peak. Mm. Um, and I remember I got, I got written out of Generations. Um, 
Okay, as unceremonious and unexpected as it was, no, there wasn't. There wasn't beef. There, there it happens. Beef. It happens. The writers were just like, we don't know what to do with the character anymore, mm. um, and that happens from time to time. So you know, it was my time to go. But I figured when I left, I was just like, um, I'm like, I'm on Generations. It's the biggest show on the continent. Yeah, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna get a new job within like this, and then. A month went by, <laughs> then two. Yo. Then before I knew it, six months had gone by. Mm. My savings trickling down. Yeah. Um, so eventually I was like, yo, fam, you need to figure out something. 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 Mm. Um, and then I, I recall at the time, I was like, well, I've got, I, I've got an idea mm. for a TV show. Um, so I was like, okay, let me maybe try putting that on paper. Um, it turns out, you know the people at SA. I pitched it to SABC One. People at SABC One were like, "Ha la la!" They commissioned it, so I was like, "Okay, maybe there's something here." Because mm -hmm. um, they even um, they were even commenting on how I'd written out the pitch deck, mm -hmm. and they were like, "No, you you have a way with words on paper." Okay. So I was like, "Okay, maybe there's something there." And then I thought, okay, if I can do this one, I've got other ideas. And I've, I was like, there's actual roles that I still want to play yeah. that I'm not, aren't necessarily getting made. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I'm not working, so let me write and see what comes of this. And then I wrote my first script, um, which was, yeah, the film that, that I won all the SAFTAs for. So I wrote that script, um, and then I sent it I sent it out to the producers and director of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, they took probably six months to read it. At some point, I was just like, okay, no, clearly I'm wasting my time. Yeah. But it was like, it's whatever, because, mm -hmm. you know, this wasn't really a career. And then I recall in December of 2014, uh, uh, Ralph Zeman, he's the director of Jerusalem, yeah. he emailed me and he was just like, all it said was like, I hate people like you and I remember thinking oh my god what, are <laughs> what did you do <laughs> so I call him and I'm just like I've already got an apology prepared for whatever I may have done yeah. and he's just like no I hate people like you who just like pick up a piece of paper and the words just start flowing oh. and he was just like he was just like this is one of the best first draft scripts wow. spec scripts that I've read in a while and he was like who helped you I was like no I did that by myself mm. he was like who taught you I was like Google. <laughs> um, he was just like, well, have you shown this to anyone else? I was like, no, I showed it to you. Mm. He's like, don't show it to anyone else. Okay. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. And then he was like, I'm going to get you in touch with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, he's a big shot uh, Hollywood script editor, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send him the script with your permission. And then I want you guys to talk through it. And yeah, he sent him the script. And I suppose the rest is history because yeah we made the film that was freedom that's freedom yeah. freedom mm -hmm. mm. big sure so i've always asked myself um what do you guys do in between these roles from a finance and sustainability mm. side of things mm -hmm. what do you do with like yeah what do you guys do or do you save up well? Like what happened? You have to save. Mm. You have to save. I think, and I know it's an, I've seen the argument quite a few times on Twitter where people are always like, ah, I don't feel sorry for artists. You guys get paid 100,000 rands or 500,000 rands for one job. Yeah. yeah mad. In, in, in. Mm. And sometimes it's just like, yo fam, yeah, it may be a, a nice looking lump sum to you, but yeah. for all I know, this has to last me for the next two, three years sure. or whatever, because I don't know when my, where my next role is, is coming from. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you save properly. Um, you have to make sure that your hustle doesn't dry up. Mm -hmm. um, and also your support structure is important. Yeah. Um, it's been, I mean, I've had to, I've had to move back home. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, I had to move back home at some point in my career. Um, when I was trying to get freedom made, uh, because I really, really believed in the film and I really wanted to get it made, I couldn't take any other acting work. Uh, because 
also you will, we were always on standby uh, always waiting for you know DTI whoever telling us no we'll give you feedback on the funding within the next um, six weeks or whatever and you're like well if I take that role I'm still going to be shooting mm -hmm. or whatever so I can't take those roles so there was a good like two year period where I was like couch surfing uh, my friend Dwayne mm -hmm. like yeah like um, okay I wouldn't I wouldn't he's he's got an ego so I wouldn't name my kid after him but <laughs> I should name my kid after him because yeah because yeah, like at some point I had to yeah I I wrote a good chunk of the script on his couch um, and he was very patient with me because I think he could see how serious I was about it mm. and that I was talking to the right people and actually making the right moves to make sure that it gets done instead of just like mooching off of him. Yeah. Um, and I still do like, I still do other jobs in between. Like mm. once people learn that, okay, he can write and stuff, they started giving me, you know, writing gigs here and there. Um, and then I'd ghost write for some of my writer friends. I won't mention any names because people get fired. But yeah, um, but I've ghost written for a few of my friends. Oh, the where, yeah, where yeah. like, are these you know, artists? yeah, yeah, these are very prominent writers. And sometimes they'll be like, oh shit, um, I I don't have time to do this, or writer's block is kicking my ass, yeah, or whatever. Easy. And then yeah, they send me the script, I huh. write it, they put their name on it, and it goes on air. Hmm. But and I'm curious, maybe. <laughs> during these low times, because I'm usually. You've, been, you've managed to remain relatively, well, actually, scandal-free. Um, or maybe I'm not searching There's hard a, enough. No, 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 no. Really. Yeah, or maybe I'm mm. not searching hard enough. Nah, you won't find anything. Yeah, but mm. how those people who are in this industry and then articles are like, a close friend. Who the hell are those friends? Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, Not the real friends, clearly. But not how does that work? Uh, that, someone... Yeah, that's usually like... That's usually like for if let's say, for example, because your profile is rising quite rapidly, if someone says a close friend, mm -hmm. best believe it's a close friend. It's somebody in your close circle. So you just have to, one, you have to be very particular about the people in your circle. Uh -huh. um, I've been fortunate with the village that, you know, the universe has sent to, has sent to surround me. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, a lot of the people are already in the industry. Mm. They're well established. Um, we're not in competition with each other. Mm. Um, my friends are all very talented, um, successful people. So no one really has a need to be like, eh, hey, Daily Sun, Jafta Wira, so, 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 so. <laughs> there have been one or two instances where people have called with sure. bogus stories. Mm. Yes. But you know you sometimes you're just like fam even you don't believe that like yeah. come on come on um like i've been i've been ambushed a time or two mm -hmm. but all those stories were were killed and also because they were nonsense it wasn't mm -hmm. true like i'm i was so my come up even when i was coming up as a kid mm -hmm. it was back in those days when like you know the pr surrounding a star was very a very big deal mm -hmm. um so your 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 image was always it always had to be like carefully crafted um and your reputation always had to be like protected like a like an egg so for me it was always a thing of like yeah you have to behave when you're when you're in the public eye um you have to behave like everyone is watching you because they are mm -hmm. so it's always been that thing for me i've just always known like behave act like um act like you've got some sense act like your mother raised you better um mm -hmm. it's always been my thing like i know not only i'm not just representing myself i'm representing the productions that i'm on mm -hmm. and i'm also representing my family i don't want to embarrass my mother um mm -hmm. i'm a petty man so <laughs> Boom -ma. Boom -ma. yeah <laughs> um that's my girl i don't play around so yeah no okay the... like do they get paid because I've, I've always been like, who's like, who's this? Close that's mind? the that's the wild thing in South Africa. You don't the stories. In South Africa, chances are no one's getting paid. But so, so friend is screwing you over for yeah, free. Yeah, they're screwing you over for free and for fun. Because in the states, at least National Enquirer, TMZ will tell you, okay, we'll give you like ten thousand yeah. dollars for the story or whatever. Yeah. Here, it's literally um, I remember, 
I remember I had to go to hospital for something in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they'll ask you things. I was having a surgical procedure. And they'll even ask you, like, you know, you list everything, everything, everything. And I remember one of the nurses came to me and she was just like, she took that paper. I, she was just like, nah, it's fine. Um, fill out another one. She was just like, don't fill in the really personal stuff. And I was like, why? She was like, eh. She was like, Mo, Hounds old clock, Cody Daily Sun, and whatever, saying yeah. Smang Mang is in the hospital, hospital for this, for, this, for that, yeah. for that. She was like, it's coming, the call is coming from inside the house. Jeez. So thankfully, she looked out for me. She was yeah. like, she's like, Unali like Unali Wut. Who come here and they stick their noses up at us and whatever. Mm. So she was like, I'm going to look out for you. Um, wow. And yeah. yeah, don't put that stuff, don't put all your information in there and all that other stuff because she was like, that's how, that's the ammo. Mm. Um, oh. mm. Nothing yeah. is safe. It's the police, it's the, <laughs> it's the nurses, yeah. it's your So when you go to the police friends, station on a personal matter. That's, but how do you think, how do you think those stories always end up in yeah. the papers? Because it's not like I'm going to the police station and then as soon as I leave the police station, I go, uh, exactly. ring, 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 <laughs> Sunday world. Um, I just opened a case of assault against Bonisile, mm. or Bonisile on Koleta 500 rand, mm. yeah. or whatever. It's, it's, yeah. People that are supposed to be serving. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's what I wanted to ask about your thoughts on the South African film industry. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like I have beef with South African um, stories because they tend to be very repetitive, same thing, same story storyline mm -hmm. like, like let me not mention names but no but i think one name that i can mention how many mandela movies have we seen guys we don't need any more you don't know that you can't say that though because you may but have seen let me tell you why i say that mm -hmm. there are so many other stories that's not that the mandela story mm -hmm. is uninteresting mm -hmm. but i'm saying that we have more to offer as south africans but Mandela. I feel like I feel like those stories are told though. There's a lot okay. of South African stories that come out quite on, on the, the on regular. The mm. Even, yeah. Mm. Um, it's just that I think a lot of the times the reason why we don't know a lot of, about a lot of the stories is mm. is the funding and the push that goes behind mm. the stories. And that's that's largely you know because a lot of the times, you know, some of the blame has to lay at the audience's feet as well. Okay. Because if you're saying you keep seeing the same show over and over and mm -hmm. over and over again, why do you keep watching the same show over and over again? Because if you guys keep watching them and mm. supporting those shows, mm. then in a broadcaster or a streamer's mind, that's what that works. Mm. That's what you guys want. Mm. So that's when they send out their you know their their calls for proposals mm. they're gonna be like okay we want something like the river mm. or we want something like Wupilokis in Pejo mm. or we want something like North for North because that's what you you keep uh, patronizing so, mm. so there's that but I feel like I feel like there's a lot of fresh vibrant stories being told locally we have some of some of the best talent internationally mm. and I think that's why um, the international markets are always coming to South Africa to come and fish here mm -hmm. and to come and, you know, basically take from some of our talent. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're using South Africa as the gateway into the rest of the continent because, you know, there's a great infrastructure for storytelling here. Mm -hmm. There's a great respect for storytelling. Um, and there's a lot of talent okay. um, that's also telling those stories. So. I mean, I get where you're coming from. Mm. I get where you're coming from. Um, there's only so many rich family, poor family um, thingies. Stories, I feel like. mm. Yeah, but like I said, um, if the rich family, if that formula has been shown to work mm. because the audience keeps showing up, mm -hmm. then you can't fault the creators mm. for giving you what you want. Mm -hmm. You can't fault. You can't fault us because if I say. I'm putting out, I'm giving you Citizen Kane and Anaconda, and you guys keep repeatedly watching Anaconda. Mm -hmm. Then that says to me, okay, you're not interested in Citizen like Kane. Kane. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, don't go down without a fight. It's Friday action night <laughs> for the rest of your life. Simple as that. Shoo. 
<laughs> okay. Mm. Um, the money element um, mm -hmm. in TV series. Yeah. Um, I've always thought it's lazy. What's your take on? Because when a person has money in mm -hmm. a series, it <sighs> makes it. How do I put this? It makes it easy for them to be entertaining. Do, yeah. Do you think? they have gotten lazy and we're seeing quite a lot of rich people interacting with poor communities i wouldn't so, name mm. yeah so that also goes back to the audience because that's um that's a trope it's a it's a style called escapism mm. and that usually escapist media thrives in in developing or underdeveloped economies mm. um because that's so you'll see for example latin america um, parts of Asia mm -hmm. and a big chunk of you know Africa mm -hmm. the the content that works is the grand telenovela mm -hmm. escapist content because people have real life problems in those communities mm -hmm. and a lot of the times the very out of the box stories are the ones that address the stuff that is you know it's real life and a lot of audiences don't want that because mm -hmm. I don't want to go and struggle on my feet for 12 hours a day and then come home when I'm supposed to be unplugging and relaxing and I'm plugging into that. new problems again. Mm -hmm. So that's why you'd rather get home and believe that you are Zozibini Tunzi. That's mm -hmm. why like even pageants are big in developing com uh, economies mm -hmm. because you know, you get to live the through, life yeah, mm. um, you know, for like how Bana Kanabarking, what's the live vicariously? Vicariously, mm, yes, yeah. you get to live vicariously. So, hmm. so that's how that's how it'll it'll generally work. That's why we, in the nineties, we only had Santa Barbara, The Young and the Restless, The Bold and the Beautiful, Generations, and Days of Our Lives. Mm. And now, almost everything is either a telenovela or a soapy. Because that's what people respond to, and that's what people want. Mm -hmm. So, so you can decide. call it lazy. Mm, you can call it lazy, but it's what the audience, um, it's what the audience receives well, and it's what the audience wants. So, and how much work would it be to sort of change those preferences? Is it even possible? It's take? possible. No, no, no. It's very. Possible. Can we give people an appreciation for the artsy stories, the stories that showcase? not just content but also the that makes people appreciate the skill of acting the skill yeah. of directing the skill of absolutely mm. but people have to want it mm. people have to want it. we've had incredible productions come out in south africa over mm. the past few years um and they're not supported by the masses mm. and sometimes it's either because you know people find like let's say serious dramas and stuff like that people tend to find those boring mm. um yeah or or let's say i'll make an, another example with something like um in that mm. yeah internationally Ooh. internationally that was lauded mm. like nobody's business brilliant, mm. brilliant yeah is that what started your beef no no okay. no 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 okay well <laughs> it was wasn't it it was around the same time I nah, <laughs> two years <laughs> different. <laughs> okay. Mm, but you see, you saw the the blowback mm. that that Ing re received to the point where like it, the film almost got banned, and mm. certain sim only certain cinemas could show sure, it, and all that yeah. other stuff. So huh. it's just like, oh, okay. Now I can imagine if I was a filmmaker mm. and I spent six years trying to get that film made sure. because I'm like. I want my audience to have something mm. new and beautiful mm. and deep to appreciate and artistic and whatever. Mm. And that's the feedback that you get. Mm. Ah. Um, but then, you know, you look at other things and you're like, well, they love that. Mm. So sure. you, you obviously go, oh, okay, maybe then, okay, let me make uh, um, Bonisile the vision. Because I agree, that's how you have to... Shoot, you like to translate you need, it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have thick skin, eh? Mm. And sometimes it's foreskin. Okay. So cool. anyways, we're thinking about... Wow. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> so look today, never create us. <laughs> oh my God. Don't kill her again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. I think uh, there's, there's three questions that we always ask mm-hmm. each and every one of our guests mm-hmm. yeah. as we conclude the episode. I think this, this hour has flown by so quickly. I, I keep checking and I'm like, how? How is it an hour already? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> An hour has gone by, and uh, sure. as we as we conclude, we always ask them this, this, the same question. Okay. Number one, mm-hmm. I need you to not be humble. Mm. Give me what your biggest mm. win is in your life and career. Mm. Oof. Does Jam Ali count? <laughs> <laughs> You want Jam Ali? I want Jam Ali twice. Do the 2000s know what Jam Ali is? Nah. I think so. Do they? they should. They weren't born when Jam Ali... Jam Ali is legendary. Jam Ali is... You know what Jam Ali is? Thank you. And she's okay. the 2000s. Mm. Is she? Yeah. 2000? Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. We hire the youth. Mm. <laughs> you see, so, we hire the youth. <laughs> okay. Here's my humble yeah. flex. Sure. I'm the only person in history to win Jam Ali twice. Wow. So I won it when I was 13. Um, as a normal guest, okay. Um, it was who was the judge? Actually, no, that'll help people find the episode. Actually, no, they won't. So, <laughs> Speedy, Speedy was the judge. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, With his talent. <laughs> Shame. He's, he's oh, a very cool guy. Uh, <laughs> um, it was Rude Boy Paul's last show. I remember. Uh-huh. Um, so I won that time. Mm. Um, yes, it really shows the time. Yeah. Yeah. You've got JV team. Jeez, been 20 years um, in and, then, mm, and then a few years later, they, well, over a decade later, I was already on Generations. Okay. And then every Christmas, yes. uh, whilst Jamily was still on air, they used to have this uh, December Christmas special mm. where they'd get yes. um, quote unquote celebrities. celebrities yeah. yeah. So the second time I went, I went as a celebrity. Oh, okay. um, so they called, it was myself, Mantla Katuka, who played Chopper, mm-hmm. um, and Kakiso Rakosa, who played Sharon. So they called oh, the three of us. We remember Sharon. Mm. Yeah, we... Of course you do. Of course. But yeah, I wiped the floor with them. You, you Good and them. proper. Good and proper. Like the gap oh, but was... But you're an advantage. You're a previous winner. No, but yeah, then... No, okay, no, what no, did the first time... What did the first time uh, losers have to say then? You what were 13 and cute. But I, st- ah, but I still had to answer questions. Oh, I knew the answers. Okay. I knew okay. the answers. Okay. I knew the answers. So, yeah, that's my that's my humble flex. I'm the only person in history to win Jam Ali twice. Ooh. Ah, um, like Jam Ali. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And think, think back to a time where things didn't really work out for you. Um, mm-hmm. What was the biggest thing that you were like, oh, here things didn't go my way? And what was the biggest lesson from that? Um, I'd probably say getting written out of generations. Okay. Um, because... Actually, that, yeah, it seems painful for me, man. Do you know, how, how, how soon before do they tell you, oh, my brother, we're going to write you out? That was the other thing. They didn't give me a lot Ish. of notice. Yo, that was the other thing like it yeah it was a bit of whiplash however i noticed because you'd see i was like my lines are getting thinner <laughs> and thinner and like certain days i'd get on set and literally all i do is react in scenes like whilst oh. other characters were talking so that was like that started giving me the impression that okay i went up <laughs> okay, you're getting your pink slip, Papa. It was Matthew's story. It was HIV. No, and that, that's what confused me because I was like, this guy is HIV positive. He's got a drug problem. He's a bad boy DJ. I was like, the world is your oyster. You yeah. can do anything you want with him. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't working out. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think that one was, was a hard swallow mm. because <laughs> One Generations was always on my bucket list. Okay. Uh, my friends from high school can... Excuse me. They can even tell you. Like I always said, by I always knew by thirteen, mm. I was like I need to be mainstream famous by thirteen. That was mm. always my plan. Um, I got so buddies and crazy by thirteen. Mm. I was like, okay, no, good shot. Then I was like, um, I remember by I was like by eighteen, I need to be in my first feature because mm. I remember for some reason I wasn't getting cast in movies at all in the beginning of my career. Okay. I'd mm-hmm. always get callbacks and be the second option or whatever. Mm. So I was like, by 18, I'm getting my first feature and it's going to be a big one. Mm. And then at 18, I got Jerusalem. Mm. So I was like, oh, okay, no, cool. Um, this bucket list thing is working. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so 
Then I was like, by 21, mm. I'm going to get on Generations. Generation. And I'd always said this since high school. Even my friends were just always like, why Generations, dog? Mm. Why do you want to be on Generations? And I said to them, I was like, it's the biggest show on the continent. You're a black icon. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, if I get on that show, that means I have, I probably have beaten all of you guys to get that role. <laughs> um, and I did. I did. I, I got that role over a lot of my friends. Wow. So I remember... Okay, that one was a year late because I got in Generations when I was 22. But I was yeah. like, I remember thinking, okay, but we're, ah, still, ah, we're still on track. Um, and then at that point, I was like, okay, by 25, I need to, you know, be making plans. Uh, Hollywood is calling, blah, 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 blah. Ah, 24. They were like, they literally threw marbles on my runway. Sure. So it was like, oh, shucks. Okay, mm. what now? And... And because all of a sudden, like I said, I wasn't getting hired for mm. some odd reason. Mm. Savings are, are, are draining at an exponential rate. Mm. It was just a lot. And that was probably my first taste of, I suppose, the proverbial rock bottom. Mm. Um, and in hindsight, I understand why it had to happen because mm. I never would have started writing or producing uh -huh. yeah. had it not happened. Um, and I never would have been able to fully take control of my own career, because at least now I can pick the roles that I want to take. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm literally in charge of the production from every decision from start mm. up until, you know, it's on screen. Mm. So, yeah, it's been, I suppose, I suppose it's been helpful in that sense. Um, and in the sense that, yeah, I just, I guess, yeah, I, I control my own narrative, so yeah. I like that. You turned like a, a bad situation almost into something that turned out to be, you know, better for you in the long run. Yeah, yeah by the skin of my teeth. I'm not. I'm <laughs> making it sound pretty right now. It was, yeah. it was nonsense. It was yeah. hell. Yeah. It was absolute hell. Mm. I don't even want to lie. Mm. Um, I don't want to make it sound flowery and pretty and be like, oh, it was, it was all cutesy. And I'm just saying this because I imagine there's somebody who's watching saying, okay, I want to do what this guy does. Mm. And I'm just saying you have to be sure. If, where's, where's my camera? Here's your camera. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> you need to be sure, bro, because like, because I'm, I'm just saying, you really need to want to do it mm. and want to do it for the love of it. Mm. Um, because if you have somebody like me, at that point, I already had like a good 15 years uh, a yeah. very long CV. I'd worked with some yeah. of the best directors in the continent, yeah. some in the yeah. world. <laughs> Um, and I couldn't get work. So I'm just saying, like, you know, it's one of those things where, like, mm, you need something to keep you going. You're literally at the mercy of other people's feelings oh. all the time. Sure. All the time. And somebody may just decide one day, like, uh, they just don't like the look of your face. Mm. Or, th or they may feel like you slighted them in public, or something mm -hmm. like There's always something. There's always something. So... Sometimes it's sure. your friends with Bonisi. Well, no, no, no. It's 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 like that. Yeah. It's really like that. There's a lot of politics that goes into it. So, Sorry, bro. so you have. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. But yeah. yeah. Last question: If you weren't doing what you were doing now, if mm -hmm. you weren't in the arts film industry, mm -hmm. what would you be doing? I'd be a fashion designer. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'd be a fashion. So, so you totally abandoned that world when you when Jerusalem hit. No, no. Um, so when I was on Generations, mm. so actually my first job at Generations wasn't as Matthew. Okay. My first job at Generations, I worked in the wardrobe department. Um, oh. So was dressing the characters and all that, okay. choosing the outfits for, you know, Mo Queen, Mo Karawo, all that other wow. stuff. So I did that for a very brief while. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and then I went into the fashion thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably be doing fashion. I still dressed. When, when I went back to Generations mm. as an actor this time, mm. um, I still dressed a few of the cast members. So I've made um, all my suits mm. that I, when I still used to do a lot of red carpet e events, that was all me. Mm. Um, I did some stuff for Sophie Ndaba, Katla uh, mm. just off the top of my head, Swazi Um Yeah, I, I dressed a whole bunch of people back mm. in the day. Um, so I used to do that. It's just that, it's not necessarily that I don't want to do it anymore. It's 
they're both full-time jobs. You can't mm. do fashion part-time, part -time. especially when you're starting out because you have to source the materials yourself. You have to go do the fittings yourself, the measurements and all that. Um, me, because I hate sewing, so mm. I have to go oversee the seamstresses yeah, the myself. Yeah. And we all know, like, yo, no one is late like a seamstress or a tailor, guys. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, it's a, it was a lot. It was a lot. So I'd probably still do it. It'll either be that or, yeah, or I'd buy the, the South Africa pageant. Yeah, that's the other thing. And run that? Yeah. Lovely. Oh, hmm. that's, that's great because uh, it sort of ticks the fashion box as well still. Yeah, that's yeah. how I got into fashion through... To Miss South Africa. I got interested, yeah. yeah. Um, Miss or Mrs? Miss. Okay. Miss. So like when I was still living in, uh, in Ramasamol, yeah. so because we didn't have a proper garbage disposal system, because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. proper, we literally just got, I think we just got running water a decade ago and electricity mm -hmm. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not more than five. So, mm -hmm. so when my grandmother used to like dispose of like uh, perishables, I suppose, like mm -hmm. newspapers and stuff like that, she'd go and set up a bonfire. Okay. And I remember there was one particular bonfire where there was, she burnt a whole lot of newspapers and magazines. Mm -hmm. And at the time I still couldn't read. I think this was like in 93. I was just starting primary school. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm old. <laughs> like uh, I'm like, <laughs> you're like, I wasn't even born. How was a package? <laughs> it was a very interesting time. <laughs> I saw your face. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I'm preempting this one. I know this one. But yes. yeah, I recall in that entire bonfire, there was just like a tiny, tiny little parchment from a newspaper oh, wow. that happened not to burn. Mm. And I can't recall, I can't say for sure if it was Jackie Mufugeng or Basitan. Mm -hmm. But I remember it was like, yeah, it was like a, it was like a beautiful black woman flanked by these white chicks. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that it was a big deal mm -hmm. that she, you could see that she was the star mm -hmm. of the Look show. Here. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know why, but that <laughs> resonated with me and stuck with me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah, it's been a strange fixation since. I don't think I've missed the, in the South Africa pageant since. Like, wow. yeah, okay. I'm friends with all the girls yeah. and all that. Like, it's very cool. It's, my f it's like soccer for me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cool with sugar? Uh, no, I'm not cool with I'm cool with uh, La Lela. That was my next one. Um, um, <laughs> and I suppose the current Miss Supranational SA, Ayanda, yeah. who's in Poland. Okay. Yeah, uh, cool with her. I was asking that because uh, one of our crew members has got a huge crush on Shudu. On Shudu yeah. Everyone's got a huge crush on Shudu <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's Everyone's got a shoot. Yeah. And she's, the thing is, when you see her in real life, those pictures, and I know it's, it seems like a lot to say those pictures don't do her justice, mm -hmm. but those pictures don't do her justice. Shufaz, I even tweeted it once. I was just like, Shufaz is probably the most gorgeous person I've ever seen in my entire life. In your like, life? No, no, no. Like, and I've seen beautiful people. I lived in Hollywood, dog. So like, I've seen, that's where all the most beautiful people in the world congregate mm. yeah. and say, I'm going to be a star yeah. or whatever. And still, the only person that I've... There are two people actually okay. in my entire life that I've ever looked at, and I just went, "Yo!" And it's Shudu and um, Abigail Fasahi. When she was, she's a news reader now, but we were crazy yeah. presenters together when we were kids. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I remember the first time, yo, I was obsessed with Abigail. <laughs> I was. Shout out to Abigail. Yeah, Abigail no, no, no. Fasahi. Abigail knows she's. That's my girl. Check hey, homie. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Hmm. Sure. And on that, on, note, on that note, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Nine to Life. Thank you, Jafta, for giving us your time, for arriving on time, yep. um, and being patient with us. We really appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Remember to leave your comments in the in the comment section about which careers you want to see next, who you want to see next, who we should bring for you, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, say what you, you, you liked about the episode, what you'd like to see improvements on. We're always open to interactions, feedback from you guys. Closing, closing comments, Jafta? Closing comments. Mm. Um, to the people of, okay, to the people of Lesotho, Namibia, okay. Botswana, Swaziland, and, and what is it, Swaziland. <laughs> he's my friend, but he's not my friend like that. 
So when I come to your countries, I'm just saying, you saw me, I was quiet. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, in fact, I was texting him saying, yo, fam, you can't Relax. do this. Relax, <laughs> these are good people. So I'm just saying, there's a... That's Bonisile. Shut this podcast on his out. <laughs> Shut this podcast out. Before this apology gets sincere. Yeah. Healing the game. I know, how do you... What is that for now? Oh. We are killing. I'm, I'm measuring the uh, the betrayal. Public betrayal. Public ah, betrayal. Uh, oh. you, let me turn here. We are killing. Oh yes. Yeah, so sit down. Um. Yeah. For his picture, sit down, and then you must just talk to him. 